Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this video we'll go through the internal layout of the solar generator but first I'd like to thank everyone that's been tuning into my videos, um, liking them and subscribing them and leaving comments. Um, I'd like to answer um, just a couple of questions that have been posed to me. Uh, my name is Astan. Um, my wife and I raise eight children here in the south. She's a writer and I work in IT. In this video, I wanted to take you through the plans that I've had for the internal compartment of the solar generator. It's going to go through several iterations, but I wanted to include y'all in the process and show you how I started and how things have changed. Um, the bottom of the tray is three quarter inch plywood. I just painted it black. There are blind nuts on the top and the bottom to hold the tray down to the case. Um, and then those threaded rods have blind nuts on the other side as well. The reason why I did this is because I was going to have three levels to the case. But to reduce the complexity, I just took it down to you know, one more level. It would have been too difficult to go through three levels to have to service something on the bottom. Um, initially, the second level would have had the bus bar, breakers, the RF modules, some relays but it turns out I had plenty of room at the bottom to be able to fit those items so it freed up a lot of space and it kept the inverter from being really high in the case this piece of board that I'm trying to fit right now is chalkboard uh, you get it from any hardware store it's about 3 16th of an inch thick I thought it would serve the purpose but it was just a little bit too flimsy also, taking it in and out of the case, it would rub against the threads in the side of the case and it would start leaving fibers down inside the bottom. Because I took it down to just one additional level, I was able to make new standoffs to raise up this tray. And the new material that I used, I didn't have to cut as many holes in the top, the side, and on the bottom to accommodate the lights and the AC input and the solar charge controller input on the back of the case. The standoffs were initially uh, 3.5 inches. I was able to raise it by one inch to four and a half inches, which cleared those items. Um, it also cleared the bottom right fan, so I didn't have to have that little cutout there. And if you ask me, it'll better increase the uh, airflow between the chambers. There'll be a lot of positive pressure on the bottom. Um, and then the suction from the fan that'll be on the top left will be more in line with the inverter. So as the inverter exhausts its air, it'll be pushing it right at the fan and the fan will be able to get the hot air out. Here you'll see the standoffs for the um, second or third level, however you want to look at it. Uh, again, this configuration has changed, but I still wanted to walk you all through the process. So this is an awesome little charge controller. It's a 100 volt, 30 amp output. Uh, it's made by Victron or Blue Solar. Um, it has a little Bluetooth dongle that connects to an, a smartphone. I ended up taking it off of the charge controller and actually putting it on the uh, Victron battery management because I'll be able to get more information. Um, here's the RF modules. I am not going to use these in this case. I was going to set it up again to connect uh, to the lights and to the inverter, but again, I wanted to reduce the complexity of it. These are the short stop breakers. I was able to fit all of them on the bottom. So again, this layout was, but is no longer. So in this shot, I'm just tidying up some of the wires before I put in the uh, tray. I made the, uh, the cord too long, so I just wanted to shorten it. This is a PowerMax power supply, it puts out about 45 amps awesome device as well. In the future, um, I think I may lower this to match the output of the solar charge controller and go with a 30 amp. 
because then I could put in a smaller relay. Right now I have an 80 amp relay. I could use a standard 30 um, amp relay to be able to switch between both devices. The reason why I picked the 80 amp relay is because standard automotive relays go up to 40 max and these Chinese relays you want to have a little playroom. And this is how the bottom looks so far. You have the bus bars, the shunt, and the 80 amp relay at the bottom. On the right side of the case, there's a 150 amp fuse that will be swapped out for a 200 amp fuse. And in this shot, you see the new tray. It's made out of HDPE, which is high density polyethylene. It's about 3 16th of an inch thick. I should have went with a quarter inch, but it'll serve its purpose. Uh, those little holes are where the charge controller and the inverter mount now, and you can see the alignment for the exhaust fan. In future videos, you'll see why I install or mount the Bluetooth module and the thermal controller for the fan. If you look at the top right of the screen, you'll see those two white wires hanging out. Also in future videos, you'll see what those are for. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more.